First of all, when we say non-stoichiometric amounts of acid and base, what we mean is the moles of H plus that are added into the mix due to the acid is not equal to the moles of OH minus due to the base that we've added. So, in other words, we're not going to be at the equivalence point, and how do we calculate pH? Well, let's try this first example, mixing a strong acid and a strong base. And whenever you mix a strong acid with a strong base, the reaction goes to completion, and then the excess determines pH. In other words, if you have more H+, plus, that's going to determine the pH. If you have more OH- minus after the reaction, that's going to determine the pH. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many moles of hydrogen ion and how many moles of hydroxide ion. So since molarity is moles divided by liters, we can calculate the moles of hydrogen ion by taking the molarity of the acid and this is a monoprotic acid multiplied by the number of liters and you can see I've turned 24.9 milliliters into liters. So that gives us 0 0.00249 moles of hydrogen ion. We use the same relation molarity is moles divided by liters so moles is molarity times liters for the hydroxide ion and that turns out to give us 0 0.00250 moles of OH minus. So then we imagine pairing up one H plus with one OH minus and off they go. Pairing up another H plus with another OH minus and off they go and at some point somebody doesn't have a partner to dance with. In other words, we're going to take the larger of these two numbers, subtract off the smaller number, and what's left is, in this case, 0 0.00001 moles of OH minus. That little amount of OH minus is going to determine the pH of our solution at the end. So we have moles of hydroxide, so now let's calculate molarity of hydroxide by taking that number of moles and here I've just put it into scientific notation and we've divided now by the total volume because we've mixed these acid this acid and base so the total volume is going to be if you look up at the top of the screen 24.9 milliliters plus 25 milliliters to a very good degree of precision the total volume will simply be the sum of those. So that is the molarity of the hydroxide and if we know the concentration or molarity of the hydroxide we can calculate the pOH. I don't have room on the slide to show that so I hope you know how to go from concentration of hydroxide to pOH. We simply take the negative logarithm and since the sum of the pH and the pOH is 14 at 25 degrees Celsius and calculate the pH. That's how you deal with a strong, strong reaction. Next we're going to deal with a weak and a strong and how does that work. So what we're asked to do here is find the pH when we've mixed a strong base, sodium hydroxide, with a weak acid, benzoic acid, you should recognize as a weak. Um, I've given you the formula there and it's Ka. So the things that are relevant for the reaction, the sodium ion is not relevant because it's not going to affect pH, but the hydroxide ion certainly is, and then we have some benzoic acid that we've mixed in. So we want to start the same way we started off the strong strong reaction and that is to find moles of both of these species. So molarity times liters for hydroxide ion and molarity times liters for benzoic acid. Again I apologize for not having room on the slide um, but uh, I want to fit it all on one slide and so I 
couldn't show that work, but it's molarity times liters. Well, we have a base and an acid. These two are going to react together. The hydroxide is going to rip off th these H's right here on the right side of the benzoic acid molecule and because we have fewer OH's than H's all of the OH's are going to disappear because they will have ripped off an H plus and they will have turned into water so after the reaction we have essentially zero hydroxide ion still floating around. Benzoic acid molecules we still have 0 .0002 and the way we get that is because we take 0 .001 moles of benzoic acid minus 0 .0008 moles of hydroxide. In other words the hydroxide has ripped off uh, the H of 0 .0008 moles leaving this many moles of benzoic acid unmolested if you will. Now what we've produced sort of inadvertently is some benzoate ion. Now we started off with basically zero uh, moles of that but afterwards we have 0 .0008 moles because that is what these benzoic acid molecules turn into once they've gotten their H ripped off. Well, we've done the stoichiometry, we've used moles, now we're going to do our equilibrium pH calculations. We're going to note here that the total volume is 0 0.05 liters because uh, if you look at the top of the screen in the middle We've added 10 mils plus 40 mils, which is 50 mils, and then down here I've converted it into liters. So whenever we do our equilibrium calculations, we want concentrations. So if we take moles and divide by liters, we'll get molarity. And I've done that for both the benzoic acid and the benzoate ion. So we're going to write uh, our benzoic acid ionizing. We're going to use our ice formulation. Initial 0 0.004 molar, then that amount is going to go down by some amount X. For the benzoate ion, 0 0.016, and then that will go up some amount. And when we start, initially we have essentially zero hydrogen ion, and that amount will go up. I have trust you've gone through calculations similar to this. We go products divided by reactants. We set that equal to the Ka of benzoic acid, which is up here at the top, 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. If we use the shortcut, products over reactants simplifies to this expression in the lower left here. So if we set this expression right here equal to the Ka and solve for X, one thing X is, is the hydrogen ion concentration, and from that we can find the pH. There's a lot going on there, but it does make perfect sense.